guys, Jasper's not doing too well. Let's see if he can make it another seven days through the quest calendar. So sit back and get ready for our weekly recap of RPG. So the last time we met, we opened up this door and we were headed down into the crypt. So we enter the crypt and a cold darkness greets you. Your footsteps echo in the long hallway ahead. You continue onward, slowly, taking a careful step at a time. As you take your next step, the floor shifts beneath you as you step on a pressure plate. You hear a click, then dozens of arrows begin to fly to you from all the slots in the walls. We're going to try to avoid the trap by rolling a d20 plus our dexterity, and you can use the danger sensibility if you have it. So we'll come over here to the tower for our first roll of the week, and we are going to roll a d20 plus our dexterity, which for Jasper is a plus one. So plus one to whatever the d20 says here. So we're rolling 11 plus 1 gives us 12, and let's see how that's going to treat us. So the result is between 8 and 12. The arrows begin to fly and you're overwhelmed. You dodge some of them, but several pierce through your armor and bite into your flesh. Reduce your health by 2. We started the week with 4 health. we we'll lose 2 already. It's not very promising. That's going to leave us with 2 health at the end of Monday. So we made it to Tuesday. We don't have very much health left. Let's see what happens today. So now that we're inside of the crypt, it is dark, eerie, and quiet. There's bound to be lots of trouble down here, but there must also be some treasure, right? So, just like the rest of the map days, we're going to start in the room with the S. We're going to try to make our way to the room with the star. We're going to read each of the rooms individually as we get there, and then we're going to determine the rest of the path that we're going to take. We're going to fly through today, and I'm going to recap you with the route that I took and what happened to me in the end of the video here. So, let's jump right to that. Alright, so starting in the room with the S, we would go directly ahead into room number two. So in room two, we found three pieces of gold, but we failed a constitution roll and lost our last two remaining health, taking us down to zero. But Jasper has a special ability called Small But Mighty, and it says once per rest, if your health drops to zero, restore to 25%, round it up. Our starting health is 17, so we're going to come back to life with nine health. <laughs> without rolling any of the death abilities. After we left room two, we went straight forward past rooms five and three into room number six. In room number six, we were attacked by a pair of skeletons, but we rolled high enough on the attack and damage to kill both of them. We left six, went into seven. In seven, we found nothing, and then we went right into the room with the star so we can get right out of there. And we are ready to go into Wednesday. So making it out of the crypt, Let's see what happens now. So it looks like we're not out of the crypts yet. We are actually in the last room, which holds a grand set of tombs. Each tomb is topped with an elegant carving of an old lord, knight, or lady. These must have been the founders of the city of Westhaven and past rulers over Maladoria. There's bound to be some great treasure in here. We're going to investigate the room today by rolling a d20 plus our intellect, and we can use the ability investigator if we have that one. All right, so all the regular viewers are going to know that Jasper is not an investigator. If you're not a regular viewer, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and then you can become a regular viewer. Make sure you like this video while you're down there, and then leave me a comment letting me know if you're playing along at home and how the calendar is treating you. Jasper does have a plus two to his intellect, so we're going to roll a d20, add plus two to it, and then see what we can find inside of this last room. Jasper rolls big on Wednesday, and we get a 19 plus 2 for 21. And with a result of 18 or more, it says, You find a residue of black ooze around the crypt on the tombs. The slime shimmers purple in the torchlight. One of the tombs was slightly opened before you got here, and there are other footprints and dust around the room. Someone was here about a week before the place was shut down. That was about the time that the court wizard, Godwin the Great, disappeared. Among the belongings of the deceased, you managed to find 8 pieces of gold. All right, so we found a bunch of gold inside of the tombs here. Let's see what we do on Thursday. So as you count the gold that you found, you hear a scraping of stone. You look and see the lid of the tomb sliding open. Grotesque figures covered in black slime begin to emerge from their resting places. They spot you quickly. Today we're going to attack four undead creatures, and for each of them we are going to roll our attack value, and then we're going to roll our damage. Apply the results and see what happens. So let's get right into it as we face off against these guys. 
All right, so for Jasper, we're gonna roll the attack value, which is gonna be a d20 plus our attack, and for him, it's plus five. And then we're gonna roll his damage, which is 2d6 plus one, because we visited the blacksmith back when we were in town. So, attack on the first undead. 15 and five gives us a 20. And now for the damage, we get a one and a two for a three. Add one gives us a four. For the second undead, we get four plus a five for a nine on the attack. Damage, start with a five, add to it a three, which is eight plus one for a total of nine. For undead number three, That's a 20, so 25. And then the damage. Start with a five, plus. Three is eight, another nine. And for the last guy. Roll three, plus five is eight. And before we finish that out, I think now is about the right time to use our sense weakness. So once per rest, we can add plus 10 to our attack roll. So we are going to change that 8 to an 18 for our attack. And now we'll roll our damage. So we'll start with a 2 and we'll add in another 2 plus 1 for a total of 5. Alright, let's see how well Jasper did fighting here. So for undead number 1, our attack roll was a 20, which means that we hit the skeleton and we are going to wind up killing him because our damage roll was four or more. On to undead number two. We only rolled a nine for our attack, which means that we missed because we rolled less than 12. And we are going to wind up taking damage there. Our armor value currently sits at 16, which means we are gonna reduce our health by three, taking us down to six health. On to the third member of the undead. For our attack there, we rolled a 25, which means we absolutely hit him. And we only needed to roll a four or more in order to kill it. We rolled a nine. So undead number three is again dead. On to the last member of the undead. We rolled an 18. So we definitely hit that guy also. If we hit him and we rolled a five or more for our damage, then that zombie dies as well. We did roll a five. So we, today we killed three out of the four zombies. We are ready to go on to the next day. So after we battle an army of the undead, we are ready to go into Friday. Today we're going to take a moment to collect ourselves and catch our breath after defeating the skeletons and zombies that came out of the tombs and graves of the crypt. We're going to search the corpses by rolling a d20 plus our intellect. We know that Jasper's not an investigator, but if you are, you can use that ability today. So we're back to investigating today. Remember that Jasper has a plus two for his intellect, so we're going to add that to this d20 and then we'll see what we find. We roll a 15 plus 2 is 17. And by rolling that 17, it is greater than 15. So we're going to see the same black ooze on each of the undead that we fought. You also find a buried skeleton still in its open grave. This one did not attack and it does not have the slime anywhere near it. On one of the corpses you find a beautiful brooch worth at least 5 gold. It just needs a little cleaning. Add 5 gold to your character sheet. And now we're going to go into the final day of the week after we search through all of the zombies that we killed there. And today we are going to find the Ring of Mine. Before you leave, a faint glowing in the corner of the room catches your eye. It seems to be on an undead hand that got severed in the fight. You slip it off the hand and examine it. It is a flawless green emerald held by a gold band. Aside from its glow, it would otherwise appear normal if not valuable. You place it on your own finger and immediately see things differently as your mind expands its capabilities. So by wielding this, it's going to grant the user plus one intellect and plus one wisdom, or we can sell it for 30 pieces of gold. And it also says that this magical treasure can be sacrificed upon death for resurrection. So before we leave, let's take a look at Jasper's character card at the end of the week here. Our health is going to be at 6 because we used our small but mighty rule when it was dropped down to 0, which was great because it brought us back from the dead. 
Our armor is still a 16, our attack is plus 5, and our damage is still 2d6 plus 1. We had our traits changed around a little bit after we found the Ring of Mind, so our strength is 0, our dexterity is plus 1, constitution is plus 1, intellect has gone up to plus 3, wisdom is now at 0, and our charisma is still plus 1. We found a ton of gold this week, and we're going to end the week with 23 pieces of gold. We used our Sense Weakness and Small But Mighty abilities, so now we have zero abilities left to use until we can take a rest, and hopefully that's coming up soon. We got a couple items left over. We still have our lockpick set. We still have the Shield of Valor. We're going to add the Ring of Mind to that as well. We have six meal rations. We still have the God's Blessing, which is our one reroll, and we have a Combat Tonic. And then if we look over there, the entire point of this mission was to rescue folks, and we have only rescued two people so far. So going into this week, I was a little worried that Jasper wasn't going to be able to make it through because we only started out the week with four health. Our health got dropped down to zero, but that small but mighty rule is amazing. Before this week, Jasper's lucky ability was probably my favorite. That has definitely been replaced. How'd you guys do? Let me know down in the comments if you're playing along at home, how your week went. Please subscribe to the channel and like today's video. I know I'm a little bit behind on these, but I will make sure that I get back up to date and come back next Sunday, maybe a little bit sooner and see how Jasper continues to do as we make our way through the bus calendar. I'll see everyone then.